Welcome back to Neetha's Travel Indulgences. This is the first travel episode of this year. Escape the hustle and bustle of the city life and join me on a journey to the lazy grasshopper farm in Oravetti. This farm stay provides the perfect balance of comfort and rustic charm. From cozy cottages to hands-on farm experiences and farm fresh dining to many more. So what are we waiting for? Let's crack on with it. Ever had that moment when you are cruising along and suddenly the world transforms into a sea of lush greenery with picturesque paddy fields extending as far as the eye can see. Welcome to a place where the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Welcome to the Lazy Grasshopper Farm. This is the Lazy Grasshopper. Rolling up to the Lazy Grasshopper Farm, we were instantly embraced by a squad of excited dogs and an inquisitive calf. It's like driving into a scene where the animals are the host and your presence is met with wagging tails and playful charm, making us part of their cozy world. Today's lunch is brought to you by Arman. Okay, Arman. So, what are we making today? Today, I'll be making my version of macaroni and cheese. Right. Uh, I'll start with the bechamel sauce. Mmm. Sounds good. With pasta, cheese, and a pinch of love, we are whipping up the classic mac and cheese. Simplicity at its cheesiest best. Time to take the plunge. Gently drop the pasta into the bubbling water and let the magic begin. Just follow the packet instructions and we are on our way to perfectly cooked goodness. Now in a pan, add 5 pots of grated garlic. Then add 1 finely chopped onions and cook till it's brown in colour. Now add 5 to 6 finely chopped mushrooms. Give it a good stir. Add half tablespoon red chilli flakes, one tablespoon of pepper powder, one third cup of cooked corn. Give it all a good mix and take it off the flame. Uh, so Arman, why did you add butter to the pasta? The butter in the pasta helps it to uh, stop uh, absorbing water. So when you okay. when you're cooking it, it stays the, its shape. Oh. In a separate pan, melt four tablespoons of butter. Add one fourth cup all-purpose flour. Mix it really well so that there are no lumps. Then add three cups of milk. Give that mix a good stir. Then add 1 tablespoon of pepper powder. Let that mixture start bubbling. At this point, add salt, 1 cup of grated mozzarella, 2 cups of grated cheddar cheese. Now add the mushroom and corn mixture. Combine everything well. Add the cooked pasta. Cheese lovers, this is your moment. Add a bit extra for that extra cheesy kick. Add the mac and cheese to a baking loaf tray. Finally add breadcrumbs and dried oregano. Normally I would use an oven to bake this, but today I will be using an air fryer. Bake it at 180 degrees until the cheese has melted and it's golden brown. Mmm! Yummy delicious! Time
time to take a look at Aisha's production at home, where deliciousness is crafted with love. The focus of the production center is to generate employment opportunities for rural women. Aisha works with the women of the neighboring villages to produce the pickles and jams they sell. I thoroughly enjoyed watching the detailed process of pickle making. Save the best for last. Don't miss the interview with Aisha at the end of the video. It's the cherry on top of this content. Aisha has got a tasty surprise coming up for the evening. Hang tight, we are going to uncover the delicious details. So Aisha, what are we making today? Right now we are going to do the marinade for our Kerala style chicken which we will cook over the wood fire later at okay. night. Okay. Um, so it's a uh, Kerala inspired, so therefore heavy on coriander, pepper okay. and coconut. Okay. Make gashes on the chicken pieces. Aisha has used around 850 grams of chicken. In a grinder jar, add 3 teaspoons of peppercorns, 1 inch cinnamon, 3 cloves, 2 cardamom pods, 2 teaspoons of coriander seeds, 60 grams of coconut, 8 to 10 garlic cloves, half an inch ginger, 3 green chilies, 83 grams of shallots, salt, 4 teaspoon vinegar, 7 Kashmiri chilies, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, grind it to a fine paste. Add 4 teaspoon of coconut oil to the ground mixture. Now get your hands in there and give those chicken pieces some love. Massage that flavorful marinade in until each piece is soaking up the delicious goodness. Time to bring out that rustic charm. Param fires up the chula for a cooking experience that's as traditional as it gets. In a heavy bottom vessel, add 2 tablespoons of coconut oil. Then add the marinated chicken pieces and keep stirring. Time to make the most of that delicious marinade. Rinse the vessel and pour every bit onto the chicken. It's the magic touch for maximum flavour. We'll open it again in between. The Kerala roast chicken smells amazing. So earthy and delicious. It's going to be a flavour explosion. So this is Aisha Chandi and she owns Lazy Grasshopper Farm. The best part about this farm is that they make some yummy homemade pickles. So Aisha, hi. Hi. Uh, tell me why pickles? Okay, the long and short of it is we love pickles to eat mm. and we went through a phase where we were buying pickles and throwing them out. When we decided to move to the farm, we knew that we had to do some economic activity and we said let's make our own pickles the way we remember it and since it is converting farm produce mm. uh, that seemed a good place to start okay so what is unique about your pickles and i'm, I'm sure there are so many other brands which are available in the market yeah. so what is unique about yours in terms of what makes our pickles different we use traditional recipes so we use traditional oils Okay. Uh, only gingerly or mustard. Uh, we do not use chemical preservatives. Uh, we use traditional pickling techniques. So where do you source your oils from? We grow plus we buy from local farmers and we mill it. Okay. Okay, right now what we um, make sure that we do, we buy organic locally as mm -hmm. much as possible and we grind all our spices ourselves. So there's no added colour because we from the 
if there's chili powder from buying the chilies, washing it, mm. drying it, and then putting it through uh, the powdering process. We do everything in house. So, what's the shelf life of your pickles? It varies. I have two months pickles. I have pickles that last a year. Okay. Uh, the mango varieties typically last longer. The mango and citrus. So you keep it outside or you have uh, to refrigerate it? You, when it's at the farm, we keep it outside because we have baronies. So it goes into baronies and we keep the level of oil correct so that it doesn't spoil. But our advice when people buy it is, since you're picking it up every day, putting a spoon in, yeah. just please put it into the refrigerator. refrigerator. Okay. But there are certain pickles like our garlic pickle, our green chilli pickle, even we refrigerate, especially okay. in summer months. So what is your signature pickle? pickle. Well, I have so many favourites, but I think the crowd favourite so far has been garlic. Okay. And how many varieties do you have? We have about 17 uh, okay. right now. So we have a full range of mango pickles, both North Indian and South Indian. We have a full range of uh, citrus pickles. Mm. Then we have the one-offs, which is brinjal. We have green chilli. Okay. We have garlic. Lovely. So if I, wa if I have to pick up pickles from the lazy grasshopper, how do I do it? So our focus is really uh, to sell online, so we're okay. listed on Amazon. We also have our own e-commerce store. Okay. We are retailing from a few outlets. Okay. Uh, but considering we don't put preservatives, there is a little bit of there's a lot of spoilage in a physical store hmm. because for various reasons. Okay. So our hope is in the long run we will go online. So we courier. We have a local post office. Okay. We courier from there. Okay, and the bottles are glass bottles or so is it? So we started off with glass bottles, I hope to bring it back sometime soon. Okay. Uh, but the courier, both from a cost perspective, the weight mm. as well as breakage was very high. Okay. So we've moved to food grade, recyclable pet bottles, okay. which you can also use for your masalas, which is what we do in our own kitchen. Okay. So where are your customer base from mainly? Uh, Primarily Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, but I'm getting orders from Madhya Pradesh, from Pune, and this oh, okay. is a lot of it is for our citrus range. So, what do you have in store, and what are your future plans? So, I think for the Lazy Grasshopper Farm Pantry, which is what we are called, what my business is called, uh, we want to move beyond food. So, the focus is conversion of farm produce. We're thinking of a DIY skin and hair care range and thinking of producing things from the farm. So Aisha, it was a pleasure talking to you and understanding the nuances of pickle making. So I'm definitely going to pick up the garlic pickle and the mango toka because I tried um, and it was totally mouth-watering. So I'm going to pick up. So hope you guys pick up very soon from Aisha. Uh, the link will be in my description box. With that, we wrap up the day. Good food and farm life. Pure bliss. Until next week, enjoy the simple joys of farm life.